Hi, my name is Mary Marcos. I'm here with Ward 5 City Councilor Joel Saslaw. He's been on the council since 2014. I'm also here with Keith Doucette, the National Commercial Manager for Securitas Electronic Security. I'm here with Anthony Lavelli, who works in corporate sales for Estes Express Lines. Today we're going to be talking about regulations uh, on marijuana, both medical and recreational in the city of Peabody, which has been quite a discussion as the city considers possibly banning recreational marijuana and recently approved medical marijuana facilities to be in the city. Um, we're gonna start off, how about we start off with talking about concerns. Gentlemen, what concerns do you have about marijuana coming into the city? Um, I'll take the lead on that, I guess. My first concern that comes to mind is, uh, is traffic. Um, traffic accidents, things of that nature. Um, did a little research. Studies have shown that next to alcohol, marijuana is the second most found substance in, a bo in, in, in the bodies of drivers involved in car accidents. I'm um, concerned about the message that this sends to our kids. I'm concerned about the element that will be coming into our city and coming to these pot shops. I'm concerned on how the police are going to handle these issues when dealing with a person that's high on a drug that is a hallucinogenic. I'm concerned about the police and the fire department and their safety in dealing with these types of people. I'm very concerned what is expected next. And what I mean by that is that we allow marijuana is heroin, opiates, or any other drug going to be allowed to come in the city. Are we just going to start legalizing everything? Um, those are some of the major concern I believe everybody has. You know, over my lifespan, I've seen and been to several funerals of friends and family members that all started smoking marijuana and progressed into stronger drugs such as cocaine, heroin, and opiates. And those are pretty big concerns that I have. It's a gateway drug, this is where it starts. And I honestly believe bringing it into the city, there's really no need for it. So Keith. let me uh, follow up with some of Anthony's uh, stuff here, which is, you know, the, the, the traffic in the city, uh, the traffic's not gonna change. I mean, it, it may actually get it a little bit worse because what you're gonna have is the people are gonna be driving through to go to Salem or go to Lynn where, where they can buy it. And they're also gonna be leaving Peabody and then coming back. Uh, so the traffic issue, it's going to be there either way. doesn't matter whether we ban it or not. I meant but, traffic accidents. I'm sorry. Okay. So with traffic accidents, and Anthony's absolutely right, the, the, the numbers show that uh, in places where recreational is legal, the accident rate on, that people are found with marijuana in their system is high. But you have to take into account that marijuana stays in the body for 30 days. So somebody that gets into an accident seven days after using marijuana for whatever purpose, whether it be medical or recreational, uh, they are not still high, but they are still going to test positive. So when they get into that accident, and they, if they have to go to the hospital for blood work or they do get arrested for whatever reason um, and they, they, take the, they do the test, that test is not conclusive that they smoked marijuana that particular day. So you can have a very long stretch of time. So those numbers are just a tad bit skewed. As far as to the point of a gateway, and I'll leave, I'll leave my comments at this point, a gateway, marijuana, in my opinion, is not a gateway drug. I have also had experiences with um, drug abuse in, in my family and friends and everything else. Um, the drug dealer. The, the person dealing the marijuana is the gateway. It's not the drug itself. So they sell your, your they, they sell the, the, the marijuana and then they sell you the, the next step. Um, so again, it's not the marijuana. I know plenty of people that have never went past it. And I know plenty of people that have jumped over it and done way more than, um, you know, uh, marijuana and cocaine and, and heroin and everything else. So they, they it, it, in my opinion alone, it's, I don't believe it's a gateway. Um, so as far as the traffic goes, um, 
my thoughts on that is that if we ban marijuana, recreational marijuana from Peabody, that doesn't do anything to ban traffic from people who use it. Um, if we have people, we have people every day who drive through the city who are high on marijuana and alcohol and whatever drugs are. So by banning it in the city, it's not going to change the traffic of people driving through the city who are on marijuana. So t to me, um, it, it's, it's legal in the state. Uh, people are using it and they are driving through the city on, on an everyday basis. Um, the gateway drug, um, I, I said also, I, I agree with uh, the way Keith propositions it. I don't believe it's a, a gateway drug. I do believe that um, uh, that the dealer, the person in the black market, they're the ones who say you want to try something next. Uh, once again, I think we always, I find we always have to bring it back to a little more common sense and the fact that we're talking about legalizing recreational marijuana in a facility that'll be secure and people go in to buy that particular product. Um, it's taken, you know, till 2017, 18 to legalize it. So I'm not concerned about LSD or heroin or cocaine being legalized. I think that's um, just, you know, I, I just don't think that's a, that's a false smoke screen in my opinion. Uh, I strictly want to stick on what I think, uh, why I support the legalization of recreational marijuana and Peabody. Um, I'm not concerned about the other drugs being legalized. I want to push back on you guys on traffic a little bit. I feel like a lot of people know that Route 1 is already very congested, which is one of the areas that has been chosen for medical marijuana facilities. We don't know where any recreational marijuana facilities would go at this point, but the in and out on Route 1 has to add to traffic in some way. How do you think that that can be mitigated to avoid any issues there? We have to move the zone. It has to be moved. There's no, there's no question. I mean, Route 1 is a parking lot, period. So being the location where it was zoned at on Route 1, and I'm sorry, I don't even know how you voted on that one, um, <laughs> but the, the place where it is located on Route 1, it, it's going to be a nightmare. It is literally going to back traffic up well past the Linfield Tunnel on, on Route 1. Um, you know, we, we have the traffic light there at the, at the jug handle. So there's, for me, I think there's only two ways that you could actually try to mitigate the traffic that's going to happen from, from it being in that location. And one would be you'd have to get state approval to get, close the jug handle and take the light down and, you know, make everybody go down to Lowell Street, like in the olden days, <coughs> very old days, right, Joe? That's right. Um, or move the zone. I do, I'm not quite sure why the zoning wasn't looked at for the uh, Centennial Park, which is a, there's plenty of different ways in and out. It's a major highway that's bringing it out. Um, and we have a ton of available space not being used. It would be a perfect opportunity. The sizes are a great location for m medical marijuana, which m almost all of the medical marijuana is want to, um, or are setting up to be retail locations. So. For that, I think that's the only two ways you can, you're can you going to be able to stop that traffic on Route 1. There's no other way to do it. All right, so I have, a, here's my question. So whether it's Route 1 or Centennial, right? We, you know, some of the uh, some of the effects from marijuana, your drowsiness, you're forgetful, you're skewed, uh, slow body reaction. So right now, down Route 1, it's a parking lot. Now somebody's driving down there, stoned, on their way to their medical marijuana facility, cause another accident. What happens next? What do we do from there? I don't know. I, I don't want it there. <laughs> okay. Whether it's there or on Centennial, it doesn't matter. Well, Anthony, that's an interesting point. Why don't we go into what we think that the police, how the police will play a role in uh, the legal, in the, in sort of the implementation of legalized marijuana. How do you think police play a role in that? What do you think is, has changed about their responsibilities as, as uh, the safety keepers in our communities? So I, I think the police, um, most of your public safety officials, whether it be the district attorneys, the police chiefs, um, they have publicly come out against it. I've said, I'm not surprised that based upon their training, their background, I would almost expect that. I do find though it's rather interesting that when the medical comes up that they always have to hire a chief of security. 
And nine times out of 10, it's a sheriff, it's a former police chief, it's a former district attorney. So uh, when, it, um, when it behooves them uh, to put some money in their pockets, all of a sudden, they've changed their position. Uh, as far as the concern, as far as policing it now, once again, it's legal, it's gonna be legal in Salem, it's gonna be sold in Lynn. So if we don't, whether we legalize it or not, our police force is going to have to deal with it today or tomorrow when it starts or after July 1st. So once again, we're gonna have to, they talk about, um, the mayor talks about the draining of funds, of resources to the police force to have to use it to, um, to police it and, and things of that nature. That's happening no matter whether we approve it or not. If we don't approve it, it's gonna probably affect the police budget as it is. So I always go back to let's zone it, let's control it, and let's regulate it. I believe if you do those things, three things properly, that you have the proper place, the pro proper procedures in place. Um, there's always gonna be people, um, I agree with the other thing, there's always gonna be uh, people who are going to have um, smoke that joint and get behind the wheel, just like there's always gonna be people who are gonna have that one last drink at last call. Unfortunately, um, we can't prevent that. Um, we can continue to educate people, and it, hopefully at some point, um, someone's gonna make a lot of money and come up with a piece of apparatus that is gonna be able, like a breathalyzer, to be able to test it. So um, are you looking for the money on this, the revenue? I, I'm, I'm definitely looking for the revenue. I have said that. I'm looking for the revenue, and I'm also a person who I believe um, in democracy. And I believe that when the vote took place back in 2016, mm -hmm. it was illegal. And we as a city voted 54 to 46% against it. So it was about 2,200 votes. So now if we fast forward two to three years later, um, the state legislature has said that we as the governing body, me one, being one of 11 people can make that decision for you, for Keith, for anybody else. I do have an issue with that, I'll be honest. It's a little bit different than a special permit for pizza, pizza chain that wants to open until one in the morning. I have no problem having it go back to the voters, but that being said, if um, the will of the council is to vote on it or not to extend the moratorium, um, then I, I will support it because I said, I believe that um, the revenue dollars are a tremendous amount. And as, and as we, we're in budget discussions right now, um, last year our budget went up $5 million. Um, our budget that we're looking at right now today is gonna go up $6 million. And um, to give you an idea of the amount of revenue we're talking about, uh, Amesbury is gonna be opening up a recreational. Uh, ATG, which is the first company to open up a, re a medical facility, was in Salem, Mass. They're going to Amesbury. They've uh, projected basically 15 to 17 million per location at 3%. About 1.5 to 1.7 million. I think in Peabody, we could have, we could we could um, easily support probably three to four facilities. Uh, I do believe they should be spread. Um, some I, I I do feel that there's that it would make sense to have one on Route One because of the traffic and um, people who do go through the city. If they want to buy their Dunkin' Donuts, if they want to buy their lottery tickets, if they want to buy their beer, and they want to pick up cannabis, and we happen to be on a on a highway, we should take advantage of that, just like we did with billboards. But um, I, I will say to you, yes, that I do believe um, the revenue uh, is a big piece of why I support it. And then any time you have a brand new industry that comes into a, a state, a city, it's brand new, that doesn't happen that often. And first to market does play into that. Uh, people get used to buying a product a certain place and, um, and that if we can establish those buying patterns and take advantage of that, I think that that puts us in a good position. And Saugus has said no to it, Linfield said no to it, uh, but, you know, Lynn and Salem did say yes, Boston said yes, uh, but we happen to be on Route 1 as people go into their vacation homes, whether they be in the summer or in the winter up in Maine and New Hampshire. I, I think that's, um, you know, we're here, and that's a possibility, that, that's an opportunity that we should take advantage of. So Saugus, Linfield, they voted against it. Salem and Lynn voted for it. And Peabody right now, we're still a little undecided, but when it was voted on a couple of years ago, the city was against it. So what, what do you think the reasons are that a town like Saugus, a city like Saugus or Linfield don't want that element in their town? So, it's bad. So I don't believe in the element argument. Um, we have uh, a lot of different types of businesses on Route 1 that might be considered a bad element. Some people might consider them a good element, but they're here, um, they're not going away, and to just do this, it, it, 
you know, I think that uh, we as a community, um, it's not going to define that Peabody is a bad place. You know, I mean, we have uh, we have strip joints on Route One. It's not a bad place. Uh, you know, the average house has, has is selling in 17 days right now in Peabody. And how uh, much are those houses worth? The what? average price, say 450,000. I just know that the mayor yeah. stated they were 17 days. Well, okay, like number so one in the state. It's a good thing. Yeah. So say it's about 450,000. What's the average home cost over in Salem or in Lynn? Probably half that. You know, What's the average cost of a home in Linfield, the Saugus? So here's our community. Now, I honestly believe by bringing in marijuana, it's here it is now, it's going to decrease. And so I'm glad you went into that because it's been provenly, it's been written extensively that home values are not affected any bit in Colorado. And by the way, in Brookline, which is a, a very nice economic community, it's been proven that home values are not affected negatively. And I'll be honest with you, if I saw research to say the other, I would, I would look at that uh, very seriously because and I respect I, it's, it's the most, it's the biggest investment that a family can make. And, and I, I did and take I a look at that today. And the homeless and the drug usage in Colorado since 2012 has increased over 10%. I did look at that today. So maybe the home value, we'll keep that for another day, mm -hmm. but the drug usage um, and homelessness have both, in, have both increased over 10%. Well, since revenues came up, why don't we talk about what the benefits are to having? Can I just jump in real quick? With just Jumping in with one thing as far as one city not having something, you know, not having it, abandoning it. There are plenty of cities within the North Shore right now that are dry towns. They don't allow alcohol. We, on the other hand, are in the process of banning or asking to ban uh, recreational marijuana. And during that process, we were awarded 20 extra liquor licenses that we asked for from the state. So. I don't, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, um, you know, that, that because Rockport's dry, they're better than us, or because, you know, Saugus has decided that they don't want to do it, or Linfield doesn't want to do it. All I'm saying is ma marijuana use and alcohol use, go. It, it's hand in hand. It's the same exact thing. Alcohol, actually, I think, is, is uh, t 10 times worse. We have an outlandish number of liquor licenses in this city. And we're, we're looking to try to ban what? What is it? What was the number? Four? Five? Uh, actually, I think it would be up to 20% of the n amount of liquor stores you could have in uh, recreational. But just going to your point about the 20 liquor licenses, when and I did support that, but when it's proposed, the reason why it's proposed is because it's an economic driver. Because mm -hmm. there's the talk about restaurants won't open up if they can't get a liquor license. So I do find it uh, rather curious that my fellow uh, councilors will support that open, you know, wholeheartedly. And then when it comes to uh, marijuana, it's like, you know, that's a, that's a boom industry too. And there's other, uh, there's gonna be tourism that's gonna start in certain uh, places across the country that have uh, marijuana. They're, they're already looking at that, traveling tourism offices across the country. So it can be used um, as, a, uh, as, an ec as a economic uh, boom also. But mm -hmm. So the three of us go out to eat with our wives, on average, we're gonna have probably two or three drinks, right? Sure. Call it a night. We're going to the restaurant because of the fine food, dining and atmosphere, okay? So I'm six foot tall, 200 pounds. Say we're there for an hour, right? Mm -hmm. I had three Jack and Gingers, okay? If you do the BAC on that, I should come out to about 0.06%, okay? So technically I'm not drunk, right? I'm legal, I can drive home, correct? Mm -hmm. You smoke a joint, What's how long is the effects on that? Two to four hours. In most cases, it's two to three. So we just had dinner. Hey, hold on for a second before the appetizer gets here. You run out, you smoke a joint, you come back in, 45 minutes later, you decide to leave, you're impaired. Now, you're leaving Peabody Square on your way back to Quail Road at 9.30 at night, driving down Winfield Street. I don't even wanna go 
with all the kids running around and just, you know, the way the road is, um, the other restaurants, people pulling in and out of the Wadhurst, et cetera, um, and going down the street, that, that, that poses a problem. Well, that gets You're into regulations. So what do you think, how do you think the regulations should differ but based on liquor versus marijuana? What are your thoughts on that? Well, well, right now, you know, a lot that's of, a, go ahead. as far as the regulations go, that, that's an issue that um, I was just reading in the, in the Boston Globe today. The fact is, the question was, when will you be, will, will there ever be marijuana ca uh, cafes in, in Massachusetts? And I think that's well into the distance on that. Um, right now, you cannot, we, we pass an ordinance in Peabody, just like public drinking. If you smoke it in public, uh, you will be fined and you will be cited for that. So we did put regulations as a council on that. That's not going to go away. Um, you know, unfortunately, if people choose to, uh, you know, go to a uh, function and have a, uh, a beer uh, uh, light up, um, you know, there's always going to be people who are going to do that. But all we can do is try and put legislation out there to try and, you know, stop that from happening. But I don't think it's something where... Uh, you're going to be walking down Main Street in Peabody. I think there was a, last year there was a city council who made a comment about, you know, you walk down Main Street in Peabody and you're just going to be billowing smoke. And I think that, once again, it's a lot of, uh, that's just not going to happen. It's not the situation. It's not realistic. You know, I'll give Anthony credit. Your, your scenario that you just played out, um, I don't have a good answer for you today. Um, I would like to think that, once again, people are responsible, just like there might be that person who has that fourth drink or that after-dinner drink, and unfortunately, they're driving down um, the street. I also do know, uh, you know, I don't know a lot about cannabis, but I do know that um, whether it be uh, the smoking of cannabis or the edibles, they'll have certain types of um, strengths yeah. um, and certain types of uh, releasing yeah. of the, of the uh, CBDs or whatever. That. So, um, but, you know, I think your, your point is, is valid, and, and I'm not looking... Uh, you know, as I said, that's a concern. I mean, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a father of two, just like you are. So I, I don't want to see people, um, you know, uh, driving recklessly. Um, you know, it's for over 21. Um, you know, there's a reason why, um, you know, there's certain things that adults can do and certain things that, um, you know, kids can't do. And, and I have that discussion openly uh, in my family, and we do talk about it. But I, I totally respect your, your, your point. Um, I just think that... Um, once again, um, the education will continue. I just don't think that legalizing marijuana in Peabody is going to, you know, set this city on its head. I, you know, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. So, to, real quick to the, you know, the regulation part and and everything. One, the regulations are already in place. Legitimately, all you have to do is change alcohol to marijuana, and your regulations are, are pretty well set. You know, we don't go to every single park and see a bunch of people hanging around, you know, drinking it up. And I'm not talking about the homeless and I'm not talking about the current uh, epidemic and, and for heroin and everything else. But you don't, you don't walk down Main Street on Saturday, unless there's a pop-up pub, um, <laughs> and, and see a bunch of people drinking outside. It's, it's not allowed. It's, it, it's against the law. And the same thing goes, as far as the regulation goes, if there's a place that's selling it, and then their people are walking out front and lighting up, the regulation not only is gonna go, has to go to the person that's lighting up out front, they have to go into the store, they have to let the people know you can't let your customers do that, so on and so forth, whether there's a first time warning and then fines from there, whatever it has to be, but no, we don't see a bunch of people sitting in front of liquor stores down in a, a 40 out front, you don't, you don't see it. Um, you know, so I think regulation-wise, I think it's in place. We have some of the best law enforcement people in, in, in the state, I believe, in this city. Um, and our police department is going to, if, it, if this passes, they're going to have to deal with it like Joel said. doesn't matter whether it's here or not. They're going to have to deal with it. People are still going to drive to Salem. They're going to get their stuff. They're going to come here, and they're going to smoke it. Um, so we're going to have to deal with it anyway. We're not going to have the funds to deal with it, though, if, if we're not selling it, if we're not making the, the, the money from places here in Peabody. So it'll allow the police department to hire more officers, 
And at that point, our police department will figure out the regulations and the, the, the things that they need to do in order to protect us as a community. It's the way it's going to be. It will be a round table with, with you know, everybody involved from the, the public safety uh, uh, people here in, in Peabody, and we'll get it done. Did you want to respond, or are you all set on that? Um, I'm good. Okay. How about we get into the benefits? What do you guys think the benefits are to having recreational shops in the city? So one of the things I think that um, needs to be brought up is the fact that when it comes to medical marijuana and recreational marijuana, it's a very uh, gray line, if any line, is the difference is. And what I mean by that is that starting in July 1st, when you can go to Salem and you go to a medical shop or recreational, and the state has basically said that they're going to approve the license holders of medical to be able to sell recreational first because they felt they've basically done a good job. You'll walk in and the product is the same. Um, the only difference is, is the medical, if you have a medical card, you're going to pay, be paying less taxes. And also if you're a veteran, there'd be certain, uh, for lack of a better word, discounts that would be available uh, to veterans. So there is no difference between medical and recreational. And that's what I think, um, it's, it's interesting because the elderly population they're coming around on the uh, medical, they just not, they don't quite understand that recreational at the end of the day is gonna be the, the same exact thing. So um, if, we're gonna, if we're gonna allow one, and it's basically proven that there's a lot of people who don't wanna necessarily pay that $250 medical card. They don't wanna be a database that the government has. Um, just, you know, people wanna go in like when they buy alcohol. Here's my license, I'm 21, thank you very much and go. They don't wanna be tracked, they don't wanna be um, you know, some people, believe it or not, have uh, a distrust for the government, uh, so they don't want to be in that database. And, and in my opinion, I, I understand that and I get that. Some people will still continue with the medical. Um, the other thing I think that um, needs to be talked about, too, is as far as the black market. I think that when you do allow and you control something and the government's involved, at least you know the product you're getting is, it is what it's supposed to be um, and that you're going to get the proper product. Um, and I do believe that the black market will go away. And I've had conversations um, with even um, a, 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 young man, a young gentleman uh, in the city who just graduated, and he believes that um, you know that'll that'll help just to tighten up things. And people, uh, you know, the kids, the access to it is not going to be easy. When these people spend one or two million dollars to open a facility, they're not going to allow anyone to come in and buy marijuana. You're going to have to show your ID. And I also believe that. If required, they would also hire legal, um, they would hire police detail so that people do not smoke outside the facility. Because once again, that, that, that's not what, they don't want to be part of anything illegal. Um, but as far as the revenues so, available, you know, I think it goes without saying. So I was 17, 18 once, right? And we used to call, we used to go get a buyer on a Friday or a Saturday night. We're still, we're not preventing anything. So a 20-year-old, a 21-year-old kid named John Doe, he knows Billy, Bobby, and Timmy, and they say, hey, can you go over to the store and pick us up some weed? They're 16, 17 years old. Do you not think that's gonna happen? Of course it's gonna happen, but Agreed. also do you not think that they don't, they're not even gonna need the buyer to go to their friend's cousin's friend to go get the stuff that he has? That you, don't need, you don't need a buyer when it's, you have to be illegal, when it's illegal. No, 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 what you're saying is if it's banned from here, yeah. right, if, if, if it's just a flat out ban, then you're still, you're still playing in a little bit of a black market, correct? If you ban it, you're still playing in a little bit of a black market. So the kids are gonna get it anyway. They're gonna get it we, anyway. Whether that's we what, approve what, it or not. That's what my point to the whole thing was. I think the Is that get, you said that it was 21 and over, mm -hmm. illegal to go in. Mm -hmm. But again, what I'm saying is that the youth, they're still gonna get their hands on this. Of course. And I'd rather make it harder for them than have it right here in this city. Uh, well, I, I understand the benefits that you're yeah, saying. No. I understand the benefits. I do think it is harder though. I think it is harder. I think it's, uh, Hotter when you legalize it and you have uh, control it and you can't go in without a medical card. I think you know it's. I think uh, it's pretty easy. But I would I would venture to say it's not as difficult to get marijuana today. I think it will be. I think it will be more difficult when you legalize it and you control it and you restrict it. Um, I do think that. And, and and I think the opposite. I think it's just it's just going to be even easier because they're already getting their hands on it now. However they do it, 
They get it. Yeah. Well, I, I think. And I, now by legalizing it, we're going to be able to give them more of it. Yeah. So I'd rather see less than more. I, I yeah, we can agree to disagree on that. That's fine. That's, that's cool. That, that, that's, that's yeah, I mean, I, you know, we I, we remember when you know way back when when you when you were you know a, a junior or senior in high school and you, you're going to have a a bash on the weekend, you got it. Yeah, it didn't matter. It didn't matter how didn't you matter got it. Didn't how, matter right. where you got it. Period. And the kids are going to do the same thing. You know, I mean, it's that is exactly you know what is going to happen. The kids are still going to get it, but I I do feel as well if if we bring it in, we regulate it. There's some stiff the the, the misnomers out there are that that these that this thing is going to be sold at you know uh, bunghole liquor. Or at the, or the CVS or or the convenience store right yeah. next to them, these these places are not going. They're not going to sell it. They can't. They're not going to meet the actual state regulations that are set right now for medical marijuana, which are now being converted over to recreational marijuana. Your regular mom and pop convenience store, even your Seven Elevens, for that matter, they are not going to spend a quarter of a million dollars, and I'm talking only on a security system, to oversee and and meet state regulation on what, what they're gonna have to put into their stores. Not going to happen, it can't happen. It, these guys are spending millions of dollars to open these medical places with the retail <coughs> attached to it just in case it was it was made legal. Now that, it's, now that it's made legal, they're moving forward with that and the prices on just, again, I can only speak to the security piece because that's, that's my business the proposals that I have put out over the past two and a half years to medical marijuana facilities, on average, 225000 just to meet state regulation, and the state can come in at any point in time and tell you you need to put more. So it's not going to be little mom and pop places, and it's not going to be every street corner in Peabody, and it's not just going to be the, the guy growing it in his backyard and selling it in his, the front of his store. It's not going to happen that way. And I'll just close with this, Anthony. I think that as a society, we, we evolve. And I'll give you an example when it comes to liquor. Uh, when we grew up, um, you know, we either found it or um, going back is about 10, 15 years ago, you'd graduate, your parents would throw a party, they'd say, no one, you know, have your friends over, no one leave, you can drink. But now, with the laws that are in place and the host, host, the host laws, if you host a party yeah. and you're an adult, you know, your, your house is on the line. So right. I think that, you know, we evolve as a society. And, Mothers and, of America, and, and Congress, it. the whole nine, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I, I, I like to think that, you know, we learn from our mistakes and uh, we didn't do anything perfect with alcohol. We're not perfect today. I don't think we'll ever be perfect with marijuana. But um, I do think, um, you know, with there, there are benefits to it. And, um, you know, um, I'll just leave it, leave it at that for now. All right. How about the state and federal government? How do you guys think that those entities might help communities like ours implement this more fluidly? So I'll take that up. That, 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 that's actually, I was going to go then. I'm happy that you did. So a couple of, so what's interesting is every day this discussion is evolving. And it's amazing to watch it and be a part of it. And we'll just go back to last Friday. Last Friday, President Trump said, that he's inclined to support by the bipartisan effort in Congress to ease the U.S. ban on marijuana. And that's huge. And here's the reasons why it's huge. Unfortunately, right now, marijuana is classified with LSD and heroin. And some of my counselors actually have stated that they're a little bit uncomfortable with how could they support uh, recreational marijuana when it's classified that way. I understand that, um, as crazy as it is, I think all of us at the table, you know, there's no, there's a little bit of difference between heroin and uh, LSD than marijuana, uh, in my opinion, at least there's anyway. So now you have the federal government finally making their first forte in the President of the United States, because that's huge. Now, Congress, excuse me, Senator Warren and the Senator from Colorado, they've actually introduced a bill to basically say to the federal government, let the states handle it. And I think that's the way it should happen. If we bring it down to our local level, um, had the opportunity about a month ago, Congressman Seth Bolton had a neighborhood meeting. I had the opportunity to ask him the question. And I asked him, I brought up the question that we're facing. What should, Peabody is facing the situation 
of having to uh, legislate, uh, regulate, legalizing marijuana. And he flat out just said, he said, Peabody and any other community is, is crazy if they, don't, um, if they don't look at it and, and, and legalize it. And he goes back to control it, to zone it. It's here. I use it as uh, an analogy, but it's true. It's, it, the toothpaste is out. It's not going to go back in the tube. And another point that he brought up that I thought was very interesting, he talked about the fact that wouldn't you want to have an adolescent to be able to have that discussion with the police officer? It's here. They can talk about it. Um, you know, it's not something that has to be a back room alley. Um, so I think that the federal government, I think the state government, um, and uh, in our largest city, Boston, even Mayor uh, Walsh was against it. But it gets to a point where you just have to say, you know, it's here. We need to deal with it. We need to pro protect our children. But how, we can also benefit from it, too. So I think, um, I think the, um, the tide is changing um, in that it's, um, it, it's here and it's something that we can deal with. And I think we can deal with it properly. We're letting the fox in the hen house. We're letting them in. Here you go. We're just going to open the door a little bit. You know, as parent, two daughters, myself, okay, we speak about this all the time at the house, okay? And when you bring in the state and the state regulating anything, I wouldn't trust them holding a potato. Not one of them. And I mean that. You, you know, you, you see a chuckling. All, all, the money goes right to them and right into their pocket. It does, there's no trickle-down effect here for Peabody. And I'm sorry for, I don't know, being so blunt or however it came out, but it, the, again, you're letting the hen, uh, excuse the me, the fox into the hen house. And I don't need a police officer or a nurse or a teacher teaching my kids about drugs, alcohol, whatever else. That's my job as a parent. So I know, again, when it comes to the state regulating and how we're going to do this, I don't trust them, period. I mean, the, the, the whole thing of the, the teacher and the police and everybody teaching our kids, they, they do that on a daily basis, period. They, they, it's already being done. Oh, yeah. We know that. we got yep. the DARE program. So with that, that's not a new program. That's not a new thing that the state's going to bring in. And, and, and I agree in part with Anthony. I don't necessarily think that I want to throw caution to the wind and, and allow the state to try to, um, you know, take care of what we need to take care of here in Peabody. I think the, the state should kind of do what the federal government is doing and hands off, right? Give it to the, give it to the cities and towns and let them decide. Um, you know, but with that being said, with the Fed, as soon as the feds, and I don't know, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know the full information, as soon as the federal government decides to deregulate and, and, and to make marijuana <coughs> no longer a, a, a class whatever substance. Class one. Thank you. What does that do literally for the ban? I mean, literally now you have nothing to go on. It's legal federally. It's so there, it's 100, it's exactly as alcohol is at this point in time. It, How do we stop level. somebody from 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 starting a, opening a store? How do we stop it? So, so here's where we're in agreement. The federal government, the reason why they're gonna probably uh, declassify it from a, a, a one is because at the end of the day, Anthony, you're right. They're gonna see the money and they're gonna want to get involved. I agree with you 100 percent that the federal government will see the millions and billions of dollars in this industry and they're gonna want their piece of the pie. Absolutely. Just like they did with the lottery. Absolutely right. But don't you guys. But, but don't but don't <laughs> but, but 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 you you did say one thing and I and I think um, it, you're incorrect. I think it is written in six percent of the revenues of recreational marijuana go to the city, not the state, not the federal. So there, that that's millions of dollars. Is, a, is the state going to take some of it? Yeah, but there are millions of dollars on the table available for us. So, okay. So I'm not sure of that number either, or that percentage, mm -hmm. okay? So if it's 6%, why can't we negotiate and get 20, maybe 25, or some realistically, like 15, and use that money for infrastructure here, drainage, teachers, 
uh, moral Sidewatch, awareness. Roads. Side of white. Okay, so if it is, if it's approved, mm -hmm. and we go forward to it, mm -hmm. the 3% or the 5%, 6%, whatever that number is, mm -hmm. say you double it. Mm -hmm. Try to triple it, okay? And come up with something. Yeah. I'm not gonna like it, but guess what? I'm a, I'm not moving. So, <laughs> so, so, so the six the six percent, I believe, is is written in the statute, so that all cities and towns would be on a level playing field. That was written by the state legislature, so that's where the six percent comes into play. Um, in so when I look at it, in um, you know, so that I've been in office on my fifth year. For the first time ever, this past January, I had two residents call me in Centerfield. Centerfield's a a neighborhood in Peabody, it's, uh, it's, it's an older neighborhood. Uh, it's down by Sue Chang's, right, right, uh, right before Sue Chang's up on the left-hand side. And I had two residents call me up, and they said, Counselor, you're going to price me out of my home. I want to stay here. And they say to me, Counselor, I understand that my house has been appraised and it's going up more and more, but I don't want to move. So it doesn't matter if my house is going up and the value is going up, I don't want to move. But if, my, if the tax bill went up $400 this year, last year, and this year, the average household tax bill is supposed to be $195. And, and I'll go back to what you said. That average house is about $393,000. I represent Wood 5, there's Wood 6. My average constituent's bill is probably going to go up four, five, six hundred dollars $600. There comes to a point where people on fixed incomes that they can only go up so much. So I do want to take those dollars I do want to take them and I want to put them back into our budget to take care of the roads, the contract negotiations, the water coolage treatment facility that we're going to have to put in 15, 20, 25 million dollars. So I, I think we have some common ground there. Um, and, I'll, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I applaud you and I'll go back and I, and I said it uh, publicly and I just want to reference it. Aside from this program tonight, if you go back and you uh, go to PATV, the legal subcommittee was on May 10th. And that's where this discussion also took place. And at that discussion, I said, Anthony, I said, you know what? Um, it's not the job of the schools to educate my children. As you said, I talk to my children about that. We have open conversations about that. If you don't think they've heard my conversations with colleagues in the last six months, you know. But so, so then I have other people say, you know, we don't want it and, 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 and keep it away from the children. Do you don't think the children know that it's legal in Salem? It's legal in Lynn. So I want to educate my son. I want to teach my sons there's a time and a place for everything. And that, you know what, there's a reason why. And that, um, you know, I talked about, you know, I talk about, talk about vaping with them. You know, we have to talk about these subjects openly. And, and unfortunately, um, some, some households don't have those discussions, so they have to have those programs in the school. <clears throat> um, but I think, like I said, we, we have a lot in common. Um, I just don't think that the sky is going to fall. If Peabody legalizes it, because it's, it's going to be legalized in other places, and that um, it's it's just sometimes I just feel that this administration makes it out to be such a moral issue. And if you actually take the time and go and talk to a first responder, talk to a police officer, talk to a firefighter, they're not worried about marijuana. There's an opiate addiction. There's Narcan. Those are the things. So take some of those monies and give and and, and have them go to, to the first responders. So I, I do think it's important, and people say, well, how do we know what's gonna happen? And I guess I'm not the mayor, and I can't control funds, but I would absolutely be uh, open to earmarking the dollars that are received from recreational marijuana facilities to a certain piece of the budget. I'm absolutely open to that. I have no problem going on a record of that and working with the administration to make sure those monies um, get to the places where they, they, they need to be. Hey, you said something that I'm gonna, I'll just jump in real quick about the moral side of it. I can't talk from both sides of my mouth in front of my children. Hey, don't smoke cigarettes. Hey, let's run out back and have a quick cigarette. Or same thing with drinking or with marijuana. You know, I, I honestly believe that drugs are bad and they're wrong. Do you and, think alcohol is a drug? Yes, I do. Okay, I just wanted to yeah. throw that out there. Oh, All yeah. Right. Okay. No, I, I believe you okay. me. You catch me on a Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, I'm probably in my pool having a beer, okay? There's and a time and a place, the right? There's a time, There's a time place. and a place, and I agree with you on that, okay? But morally, ethically, however you want to say it, I'm the same way. I just, it's just, I don't know another word for bad, or it's not good for you. You know, I don't want, 
I don't want to see our kids and our youth or even a, uh, you know, a 19 to 23 year old kid walking down at the mall, you know, spaced out, completely out of it. Can't tie your shoes, et cetera. I mean, all the, you know, I, I know I'm taking it to a little, a little further than I should, um, but those are the things that I see and but I that, envision. But, but don't you think that's a, an adult decision? Don't you think that... Um, Do you think a 21-year-old is really an adult? Well, what I'm saying to you is so. who makes the decision, you know, who, who, who decides whether Jack Daniels, a Budweiser, a smoking a joint, you know, different people. Some people don't want to smoke, uh, want to drink alcohol. Some people might want to have marijuana, whether it be edible, whether it be smoking. So, you know, listen, I know you served the military. I thank you for that. You represent our country. But I also believe you represent our country so that so people who want to do something legally, their rights are protected, they can do it. And I don't think that, um, you know, people who want to partake in cannabis, marijuana, that, and they don't want to drink, that that right should be taken away from them. And neither do I. And so what this, again, what this probably boils down to is the city voting on this again. We, I, uh, you know, you said it earlier, we voted on it once. When it was it, illegal. When it, oh, okay, I, you know. That's an important distinction. It really okay. is, I do think it is. All right, so Especially if the city was, the, if, if there was another vote, then, if it if the yeas win, then the yeas win. If the noes win, then the noes wins. Then you should move forward on it. And, and I could, but, I, I could I, live with that. I, that's, I'd rather see it that way than go ahead and start making all these plans and doing all this. Because as of right now, what was the number you said? 56%? 54, the, 54 to 46. All right, so 50. Talking, you know, when we're talking about Okay. That. So the yeas still uh, won that. So again, in a so that was illegal, of, and now today, if I said to you, okay, okay, but so you're gonna go in a voting but box, we did it privately, once already, and it's legal now, though. So it's, now it's legal now. So if we were to vote on it again, and whatever happens, then happens. But sure. uh, you know, yeah, no, I, I'd rather I, I see it done agree. that way than everybody else making a decision for me. Okay. So let me so let me jump in here. So right now, basically, what happens is, you know, we need to prevent. It. We're looking to prevent a ban, right? Because right now, if it if it's banned, we need a whole heck of a lot more than what we need right now to prevent it. For me, I'm I'm in agreement with you. I think that what we need to do is extend the, the moratorium, get it on the ballot for 2019, and then let give it to the voters again. Because what you're doing, so your moral compass that you have, that you're saying it's bad, it's bad, I think there is well more than, what was it again? Four, four, well more than 4%. Well, their moral compass will be gone now that it's legal. Well more. And, and I, I think it would be overwhelming to see the number. I'm, I would actually be very, I'd rather see it go to a vote so we could actually see the number. Um, because at that point, then you know. You know where the city is. I mean, just for an, ex see, just now, for an example. See, that's, that's exactly it right there. Yeah. Then you would see where the city's at. And just for an example, you know, we put the word out looking three days ago for, some, for, for somebody else to, to come in with us and sit against. Um, you know, we, I'm the we, only guy who doesn't want pot here. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't get, you know, I didn't get one. I, we, you know, we had one person back out, and, but we didn't, that wasn't a person that I got. So I, I called Anthony, um, but we got nobody. And that, to me, that speaks volumes, that we put it out to probably over 6,000 people on social media, and we didn't get one taker to come and sit with us for against. I had five people that were begging to come for. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 we're four, we're all set, we're good, we don't. But again, so I think that speaks volumes to where the city is right now. Well, I think maybe very my view is conflicted. the minority. May, may, maybe, it, I don't it, it know. It might not be, you but know. But it might not be. Um, but I'd rather see, I'd, before I, I sell my soul for 30 pieces, I, I'd rather see it be voted on. And, and so um, that's a possibility. Um, we are waiting. I did make a request um, to the city solicitor 
uh, last week to get confirmation on um, if we can put it on the ballot in 2019, November of 2019. Um, and the question was also, um, if this ban did pass, uh, because you have to, I think it's important people know the history. Last year, uh, we took the same exact vote. To change the zoning in Peabody, you have to change, you have to have eight people to vote in favor of the change. And last year, the vote was 7-3-1. Seven voted for it, three voted against the ban, and there was one council absent. So it failed. It's my understanding that because we have a new council this year, the mayor was able to bring the ban back up, which he has done. And I have asked the mayor to, um, we do have a moratorium through the end of this year. That's, that's on the record. I did ask him if we could maybe continue that moratorium. Um, I did not get, um, you know, the, I did not get that response. Obviously, he wants to go forward with the ban. So now next week, excuse me, on the 28th of June, we'll be having the meeting, same situation. It needs eight votes to pass. My question is, if it does pass, and the ban goes into effect, can we then bring it back next year and overturn it? And we, the pro, who want to have recreational marijuana, we would need eight votes to turn over the zoning ordinance. I just, the only question I don't know is if um, it's the same sitting council, if uh, we're able to do that or not. Some of these, you know, I'm still a layman at heart. I got into this late in life politics, but uh, I'm not a lawyer. But those are two questions that are out there. And as soon as I can get those, uh, I'll make sure that Keith and his network uh, we'll post them up because that that is um, those are two questions that are out there that we can't resolve this evening. All I do know is that on the 28th we will, we will be taking the vote uh, on the zoning ordinance to ban recreational marijuana. Um, but um, you know I, I I have said that I would like to see it go out to the city and you know we we, we all know that once that happens the the money's going to flow in from the uh, the pros and the cons. But at the end of the day I take a lot of uh, I have a lot of faith. And uh, the, the citizens of the city, they'll go in the ballot box privately and they'll do what they want to do. And unfortunately, Absolutely. there still is a stigma. Um, we know that. We, we wouldn't be honest with each other if we didn't say that. Some people do it. They don't want people to know. Um, but, um, you know, as I said, there is, there is some people, believe it or not, in the city government who, who do believe um, that we should look at it. And as I said, it, you know, some people say it's not, about, it's not always about the money. But I think sometimes you have to be honest about that and say it is about the money. Um, and I'm just looking to take those, those dollars um, and put them into our city to keep the tax base down. It would be nice one year to maybe have no increase at all. And uh, we know, uh, listen, we all know um, we're gonna, we need some, uh, the high school, uh, you know, it's an older building. There the, the center school, which I represent, the Welch School. Um, those buildings need to be looked at and some need to be actually rebuilt. And those things, um, are not going away. So if we, and I, and I believe this, if we weren't in Route 1 in Peabody, I'm not saying that, um, I think the, they said that's more, more license of being out to Worcester County uh, for recreational, because I believe those cities and towns have, have approved it. And quite frankly, if you look at places like Fitchburg and uh, the, that area, they are more economically depressed in this area. So some of those city councils and mayors have actually been open to it. Because um, they need the cash. That's right. They need, yeah. it, they need it more desperately than we, we do, don't. possibly. Right. Well, we, no, we do. We, 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 we could use, use, some, we right. could use right. some money. Right. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind a, a little tax hit. Right. All right. right. Uh, I, I, I'd like my taxes as low as they can possibly be, like everybody else. Sure. But, uh, you know, here's my, here's my big question. Uh, you know, to both of you guys, what do you do if you're driving by there and you see your, your son or your daughter? Standing out front or getting ready to walk in. What do you do? I'd have to plead the fifth. Uh, you'd have to plead the fifth. <laughs> I mean, assuming that they're under 21 years of age? Uh, say they're with, uh, I don't know, somebody who is 21. If they're going to walk into a, well, a record they're, they're, they're going to they, walk in? They're not going to get in. I'm telling you, Anthony, they're not going to get in. Okay. There, there is too much. At stake for these businesses. This is not a six pack that's they're willing to, you know, put okay. up, lose their license for seven days. This is multi million dollar facilities that have way too Can much I just to jump lose. At, let me, at let 20, me jump in. At 21. Hold on. Let me at jump 21, in real quick. How would you feel? I'd, I'd ask him to talk about why he's made that decision and, and why he feel, you know, they're 21 I, I, at that you point. You know, you they're, know. They're, they're literally 21 at that point. We, you know, everybody's screaming and yelling about we need to protect our youth, we need to protect our youth, and so on and so forth. And this better be 21. 
We send our youth off to war at 18. And we don't allow them to drink. Now we're not going to let them. That was always a shock, by oh, the way. Yeah. I know. <laughs> we don't allow them to drink. We don't allow them to smoke weed. But they can go off to war and get killed for us. Really? And so I for me, at 21 years old, they, they make, my kids are going to make their own decisions. And by 21, I have better have done my job as a parent that I will never see that. Now, if they are walking into a medical facility, well, then that's a different story. I have, I've looked into different things for my, you know, to, to, to see if there's anything out there that may help, you know, anybody in my family if there's medical marijuana for that. But what you have to understand, and as Joel said, under 21, they're not, they are not getting in. They're walking into a door, and the first person they're meeting is a security officer that's sitting at the door with a computer. They're going to pull that computer up. If they have a medical marijuana card, great. They're going to be let in, but that means they're 21. If they don't have a medical marijuana card, they're not getting past there, period. And there's two more locks going into that location where they can actually pick up the marijuana and, and, and then bring it out. There's two locks to get out as well. And the problem is you can't get into the exit because those things are locked down. And I know that because I've, I've set them up. It, so having them, they are not going to get in. But again, as parents for, uh, of a 21-year-old, I have better already done my job that they're not standing out there and getting ready to, to, to whether smoke it, standing out in front of the store or whatever. At 21, they're able to make their own decisions. If they can go off to war, they can certainly make the decision whether they want to Buy some marijuana, go home and smoke it. And I think I think that the thing that we can all agree upon too is that uh, you know there's a there's a word you teach your children about growing up. And it's called moderation. And no matter what it might be, you, you have to do it in moderation. And when something takes control or overtakes your life, then you have to look in the mirror and then you have to deal with those consequences. And that can be on, on, on many different levels, on on, on many different things. Um, so I think that's 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 key. I agree. So there are a couple upcoming dates that our viewers might want to pay attention to. The 14th, there will be a municipal marijuana subcommittee um, to vet those host agreements. And the 21st, the planning board will give their recommendation. And as Joel mentioned earlier on the 28th, uh, the special permit applications will go before the city council for those two medical marijuana facilities. Joel and and Keith and Anthony, if you have an input on this, what, what do you guys hope will come out of those host agreements if, actually, obviously, medical's already happening. So what do you hope will come out of the host agreements? What do you hope the community will get out of these facilities being in, the, in Peabody? I already mentioned it earlier. Instead of the 6%, or what, uh, I'm sorry, Joel, was the host, that the host agreements uh, uh, for medical is 3%. All right, so three, we'll just use 3%. I, I want to see more. If we can get more, get as much as you can. And then take that money before it goes to the state, we and refilter it for the city of Peabody. For again, you know, we have drainage issues, um, police, <coughs> fire. I mean, all the things that Joel said. Uh, the infrastructure, roads. I, take the money and use it for that. You know, uh, schools, Peabody High. It's, that's a huge one. You know, uh, how about some new uniforms for the kids? Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, so. I, I, not the 3%, I'd really like to see more money. However they could pull it off. I, I would go with, you know, I mean, I'll go with Anthony on that one. It's, uh, Peabody is a prime location for these medical marijuana places and, and for recreational to, to be added onto the medicals. Um, w right now, I don't think you've picked the correct location for them, but, you know, who am I? I, I don't, I have no idea. but. Looking at the places, looking at the zone, there's only one way in and one way out, and that's Route One. There's no way you're going to be cutting into anything. If your if your traffic counts are wrong, you're done. There's there's no fixing that at that point. You know, talk about letting the fox into the hen house. So, for me, we are at a prime location with Centennial Park, having the availability that we have there right now, and it being in a location where you have 128. 95 and 93, 114, that all intersect golden right triangle. there. It, it, exactly. It's, it's perfect. So they call it the golden right. triangle when Turbogen built it. And it's, 
So it's perfect, on and off, no problem, this, that, the other thing, you got cars coming from wherever they're coming from, they're not tying up Route 1, you're not tying up any side streets, you're not getting your neighbors angry because as much as they're gonna tell you don't cut through the, those Linfield roads where those, you know, the Linfield people made such a fuss, you know, at some point in time, they're, they're gonna cut through those roads. So for me, I'm with Anthony, I think we're at a, pri we're at a prime location there if we could rezone this, have everything, you know, have the zoning up at Centennial. There's also Why do you really keep no school. Going centennial? You know, because... I lived down down over there. <laughs> exactly, right there. Right. You just want to aggravate me, don't you? We also want to aggravate Council Turco too. Right, exactly. Woodward Council Turco. This is because John didn't come. You can text John when we get back in the car. So for me, I, I look at it as you know, we can kind of we. I think we can ask for a little more. We can ask for a little more than Salem. Salem's so hard to get into. We can ask for a little more than, than Lynn because Lynn's so hard to get into. I think we can actually leverage our location and whether it's Centennial <laughs> or near the North Shore Mall or whatever, you know, again, and, and you know, I, I think we can get a little bit more money than the 3% that, you know, that everybody's talking about. But I also think we can, we can set it up in a way that it's not going to f affect the daily life of the residents of Peabody, right? They're not gonna be sitting in traffic. They're not gonna be dealing with a bunch of, you know, a, a bunch of things going up on Route 1. So that, that's the way I think. So, so, so the 3% is pretty much, I believe that's a, a basic, um, that's in, a, in, in the, um, in the, um, in the, uh, the bill, the 3%. But what happens is, and, and what I'll be studying up on a lot more between now and Thursday, is other earmarks. And what I mean by that is, um, we had a new student health facility that was uh, funded by a private entity uh, when it went into the high school about three to four years ago. We'll be, we'll be asking for funding of that. Um, and without wanting to really play my cards, I do know that there are other things that um, the Department of Public Health and Peabody has asked for. Um, there are always things that um, we can look at, uh, whether it be education on drugs or other things that might be necessary. But I think you'll see um, it's an interesting position because it's not often where you can uh, come right out for a company and say, we would like this and this and this. And what's gonna happen most likely is we'll ask the same of both companies uh, so that they can fund uh, what we feel uh, the administration feels important. The councils will have their opportunity to uh, have that conversation on Thursday and hopefully by the end of the, uh, the uh, committee meeting on Thursday, we'll have an agreement in place um, that will be formalized in two weeks, but there definitely is more than 3% that's on the table. Um, and the other thing, um, to the mayor's credit, there, are, there have been other uh, cities and towns that do go a little bit overboard, and all I mean by that is um, you do want them to be able to be a business that stays in business because if you can get um, you know, $500,000 for one year, that's great, but wouldn't you rather get $100,000 for 25 years? So I think that the council recognizes that, I recognize that, and I think that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a good job with that. But um, the things you folks talked about, absolutely trying to get more than that 3%. And as I said, we'll earmark here for certain things that uh, the, the city feels is necessary. And a lot of them do have to do, uh, I think you'll both be happy here, with the youth and things of that nature and public right. health. Great. And gentlemen, anything else important for our viewers to know that I didn't ask about this evening? Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I think we covered everything. You know, I think the only concern I have um, with if we end up banning recreational, you know, we keep everybody keeps saying medical's coming, don't worry about it, medical's coming. Um, my problem is that two of the locations that I've worked, worked on in the past, um, if they weren't able to work their building to have a recreational side of the business um, to be able to be built out. They, they were not gonna, they scrapped the deal. That was it. So my concern is if we end up banning recreation, I, my concern is we're going to end up losing medical as well. And because medical is not where these guys are going to be making their $2 million back. All right, it is clear that they are building these places and spending this type of money and it's taking a year to two years for the doors to open. So they have a half a, a million and a half to two million laying on the table before they've even collected a dime back to try to pay that back. And again, I feel that recreational is a big part of their thinking 
and they just assumed it would, you know, well, once it passes, everything's going to go. My fear is that all the medical is going to pull out of here and go elsewhere if we end up banning recreation. That's, that's my concern. <coughs> that's, I'll leave it there. So I'll just close with this. I think you have to have trust and faith in your elected leaders in the city. I'm proud to serve with the men and the women that I do. Um, at this point, we're not all on the same page. I think some people are further along than other people, but I believe, once again, if we can control it, we can zone it, and we can regulate it like it should be, that um, it's not gonna make Peabody an undesirable place, it's not gonna make Peabody a bad place. In reality, we can take those revenues um, we can put them into our schools. We can put them into our sewer and water system. We can make Peabody a better place than it was today. I don't think it's chicken little. I don't think the sky's going to fall if we um, uh, regulate it. Um, I think that, once again, if we just control it, zone it, and take those funds and put them in the proper place, uh, we're in a very unique position. Peabody has a lot to offer, as Keith said. Uh, we happen to be uh, at a tremendous opportunity as far as the highways and the byways of the city. And I think we should take advantage of that opportunity. I believe there's something to be said about being first to market. Um, and every day, the conversation is moving forward. And, and even in the last 30 days, we've seen how it's come even further. Um, and so I think Peabody, I believe in the citizens of Peabody. I believe in, the, in, in my fellow um, uh, councils in Peabody. And uh, we have a great infrastructure in Peabody. And I think we can control it, as I said, and do the right thing. And I'll continue to support it. Uh, and hopefully uh, we can either overturn it, we can put off the zoning ordinance on the 28th. Uh, if not, then I will then look forward to be bringing it to the ballot. Uh, I am waiting for, once again, uh, the ruling from the city solicitor on the, uh, the logistics of that. But I will continue to be out in front of this. Um, and uh, I do have Peabody's best interests at heart. And I want to thank uh, Anthony for coming down. Thank you. I want to thank Keith. Thank Appreciate you. it. And Mary, could you have a final? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you to our viewers for watching.